mixer first. That'll do. Hey guys, I'm Tom and Tech Chat, but I want to find out which has the best camera between the new Google Pixel 4a, the iPhone SE, and of course, the OnePlus Nord. All three phones are under $400, so I think they are three of the very best budget phones you can buy right now. I will just say off the bat, I have no preference, no bias. This video is not sponsored by anyone, and the fact that the iPhone's in the middle is just because one of the phones had to be in the middle. But hopefully as you guys watch this and uh, I give you my thoughts along the way, you'll give you some idea of how they compare and which phone offers the best camera setup. All right, so let's kick off with a video focus test. And as I come up and down, hopefully not making you feel too dizzy on the way, while smooth, the iPhone is actually the slowest. In this test, I think the Nord is fastest, although only just, but looking at the back of the chair close up, you can see it's the least detailed. Switching to the lights, and firstly, I'm actually stood the exact same distance away with all three, so you can see the Nord actually gives you a wider field of view in the video, whereas the Pixel is a lot narrower. So what about overall video quality? Well, this is my lovely wife, Sarah, very kindly holding my coffee while I look like a complete idiot with a three phone trident contraption thing to get this footage. But for these tests, all three phones are shooting at 4K 30 with their rear cameras. Side by side, the Nord has a slightly cooler hue to the colors and also looks a little bit more saturated, but dynamic range is good on all three. The differences really are quite subtle, but I think the iPhone is just edging out in front with the most true to life colors. The Nord is a little oversaturated and the Pixel can sometimes have a slightly unnatural purple tint to the video. Even at 4K 30 though, they're all impressively stable, especially given the price of these phones. As I'm walking though, when the lighting changes, I think the iPhone does maintain color accuracy a little bit better throughout. And looking at the pathway and the grass, it's a touch sharper too. It's nitpicking for sure, but I'd say the Nord and OnePlus tie for second place. But what about low light video? Well, as I pan across my living room, you can see the Pixel starts off much brighter, but at the expense of lots of noise. The iPhone does a good job handling the bright highlights of the monitor, but it's also a bit of a noisy mess. Walking over to my desk and the Nord is the shakiest, you can really feel the judder of every footstep. But overall, it's doing a decent job of balancing brightness and noise. Once we get to the PC though, the Pixel, to its credit, does give us the most detail. You can see the dust in the window of the case and more detail in the wooden desk. Going outside though, and they're all pretty bad, but I have to say, while it struggles with the stabilization when moving, the Nord is consistently the least noisy. We get decent dynamic range and it's reasonably bright. But what about selfie video? Well, this isn't the ideal setup because I appreciate the angles are a little bit different on each phone, but I'm shooting these with the front-facing cameras. And, well, you can see a bit of a difference in how it handles the brightness on my face, the dynamic range. Also, I'm switching between the microphones, so hopefully you can get an idea of the audio quality from the microphones. But one extra trick the Nord has compared to the others is an ultra-wide selfie lens. That is getting bright, but as you can see, we now have a much wider field of view on the OnePlus, so if you're doing a selfie with a bunch of your mates, then obviously you'll get their beautiful faces in the shot as well, whereas the two feel a little bit cramped in comparison. So hopefully this is giving you a bit of an idea of how the selfie cameras compare in terms of video. All right, so let's get into some photos. I'm sure you'll be sick of my face by the end of this, but first impressions, and I actually really like the Pixel shot. It's a good balance between the pleasing but slightly flat look you get of the, of the overly aggressive dynamic range on the iPhone and the too contrasty and shadowy look of the Nord. Now I should say that this is not my house, unfortunately, I wish it was, but you can see a similar pattern here of the iPhone looking bright and, you know, great for Instagram, but a little flat and missing some contrast. The Nord also looks pretty vibrant, but it was quite a grey day, so while it is the least eye-catching, I would say the Pixel is actually the most true to life here. One big advantage of the Nord though is we get an ultra-wide lens with a 105 degree field of view. It is noticeably darker and softer than the main lens, but it does add a lot of flexibility to the shots that you can take. It's really interesting. If you just want to take a photo and post it straight on Instagram, I think the iPhone is your best bet as it's always the first one I look at. It's bright, sharp, and colorful. Again though, the Nord's overly contrasty look does mean it loses some detail in darker areas. 
Next up, we have this clock. Now, none of the three phones have a telephoto lens, but if we pinch into a 7x zoom, the Pixel really stands out here versus the others. The Nord is a close second, I'd say. It's sharp, but darker and noisier, with the iPhone coming in third. So yeah, hats off to the Pixel. Despite not having a telephoto, I'd say it offers the highest quality digital zoom. Now this very cute dog really does show how the better dynamic range of the Pixel on the iPhone gives us more detail in the darker areas versus the Nord, which again is just too dark and contrasty, if that's even a word. Sarah's back again, and surprisingly, I think the iPhone comes last here. It's just too bright and the clouds at the top are completely blown out. It's not just a one-off either, here's another example from the iPhone and it's the same issue, whereas the Pixel and the Nord are more evenly exposed. As for portrait shots, well, which one do you prefer? So the Nord actually gets its own dedicated depth lens, and you can see the bokeh does get stronger the further you go from the subject. The Pixel is definitely the sharpest, and to my eye, the most professional looking. But again, it comes down to do you want the most accurate or the most appealing photo? The iPhone is brighter and gives a more flattering look. But let's switch gears and look at some low light and nighttime shots. So first up, this is my backyard and it's just taken in regular photo mode. But then on the Pixel and the OnePlus, we have night sight and night skate modes respectively, with the longer exposures giving us brighter and sharper photos. Sadly, the iPhone SE doesn't have any kind of night mode. Don't forget though, we still have that ultra wide on the Nord, but even with nightscape, it's much darker. Looking inside, again, regular photo first and then night mode, except for the iPhone, of course, which still does a decent job though. But the Nord's colors are way off here. It looks like my house has just been painted yellow. At my desk, this time just a regular photo. And again, the Nord's colors are way off. I think the SE actually wins here. The Pixel is actually quite noisy when in low light and not using night sight. Here's another regular photo, and again, the Pixel is very noisy, which is a bit disappointing. The Nord's actually quite impressive here, but then those magical night modes come in and it changes everything. Night sight on the Pixel is basically magic. The Nord still looks pretty good actually and is a close second. The iPhone, well, all you can really do is turn on the flash, but that's never ideal. A quick photo of me, not using night modes. The Pixel is by far the sharpest and I think the most natural. The iPhone is the brightest and most vibrant, but the colors are a little unrealistic. And the Nord, well, the Nord is so soft it looks almost out of focus. Just to be clear though, none of the phones have any beauty modes on. Heading outside again, and these photos are with their respective night modes. And I really don't know what's happened to the OnePlus here. It really does seem to struggle with white balance in low light. And then, no camera comparison would be complete that features a Pixel without an astrophotography shot. So this is the unedited result of a 4 minute photo on the Pixel, using multiple 15 second exposures. And it looks fantastic, but it does require a tripod or to be completely stable. You can't do this handheld. All three photos here were taken on a tripod, with the OnePlus in its dedicated tripod mode as well in the settings, and actually it does a pretty good job. And finally, let's look at a couple of quick selfies, and they actually all look really good, but I'm particularly impressed with the Nord here. Not only is it sharp and color accurate, but we also get the option of an ultra wide selfie lens, which still looks good, and if I had, you know, friends around me, they could all squeeze in the frame. However, in bright sunshine, you can see the Pixel and iPhone handle the dynamic range better. The sun isn't as blown out on my forehead as it is on the OnePlus. And last but not least, with this tricky backlit scene, the iPhone's background is completely blown out, but importantly the subject, you know, me, is well lit, even if the colors are a bit unnaturally vibrant. My face on the Nord shot is just far too soft, even though I do like the wider view and the good dynamic range. So overall then, which phone do you think came out on top? In my opinion, the Pixel 4a wins in terms of pure image quality, photos are accurate, and its night sight and astro shots just can't be beaten. However, I do think the iPhone is the most Instagram ready, if you know what I mean. It's bright, consistent, and a good all-rounder for both photos, videos, and selfies. But its lack of night mode does cost it. And then we have the Nord, which gives us by far the most versatility with the extra lenses, even if the less said about the macro lens, the better. But importantly, I don't think its dark, heavily contrast photos quite keep up. Although its nightscape mode and video quality does hold up well against the Pixel and iPhone. So to be honest, for under £400, you really can't go wrong with any of them. If I had to choose, I think I'd go with the Pixel 4a personally. But let me know which one you go for in the comments below. And if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and help me get to that 1 million mark. Thank you so much for watching guys, and I'll catch you next time right here on the Tech Chat.